Hello. Once again, this is Jeff Robertson with Penton Audio USA. And this is a tutorial video on how to manage your audio files and set up a message player in the IDA8 mass notification audio processor slash controller. So to get started, I'm going to launch my IT studio and I'm using version 3.1.00. That's the most current version as of the recording of this video. And the first thing I want to do is make sure I get the audio files in the system and also into the IDA8 machine. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to go up here and let's go view. And the first thing I want to do is go to resource. And what this is, is this is the actual file on your computer that the IDA8 or T-Studio software goes to grab certain files. And they can be bitmap image files, your WAV files, um, your message files, the PSS pictures and stuff like that, G722 codec files for streaming. Any of the files that you are going to have the software go grab and transfer into the machine, this is where they're stored. So you have to make sure that your audio files are configured for WAV format, WAV format, 16-bit, 16 kilohertz mono audio WAV files. So I will go to my WAV tab here, and I have some stuff already in here. But let's go ahead and add one in here. So I will click on Add. And this is where it's going back to the last folder that you're in. You want to make sure at least you're in the version of T-Studio if you have multiple ones that you're working in. So I will back this all the way out. And I'll go into my computer and I know where my audio files are. And so my music and here's my WAV files. And here's some files um, that I had set up in here. And let's just go and say, yeah, I'm sexy. We hit add. Once it's over here, that's been added to the resource folder. And I click OK. And you can see it's been added to our resource folder. And there it is. So now it's in the right folder. To get it into the machine to be able to be used for your message player, you have to highlight whatever machine you're working on. And this is my controller right here. And right here on the right-hand side, there is a selection called Machine File System. So we will open that up. And we can see right here, these are the only files that we've linked from the resource folder into the machine. So all we have to do is say Add. We go to, here's your resource manager, we hit wave. Here's all the files that we've added into our resource folder. And for fun, let's just say our shuffling. Uh, we could say our slow whoop and our I'm sexy. And we hit OK. And there they are right there. And all we have to do is click save. You will see the progress go here. And then when they're added to the root menu up here, we know that they have been transferred into the machine. So let's do that now. And there you go. They're in here. If you try to save these as a format that's not WAVE 16-bit, 60 kilohertz mono, it would give you an error at this point said that that uh, format or sample rate or whatever is not supported. And then you could go to your audio editing software to fix it at that point. So now we know they're all in there. So we can close this out and now go into our design to set up the message player. We have two message players actually in the main DSP component list. And I will go to message. We'll expand this out. We have message player and MM. MM stands for multiple message or multi-message player. For training, we're just going to grab the single message player. And that only has a single audio output. There are several options here when you drag the component in. One is CR. This is your uh, clear or reset pin. A logic signal to this pin will stop the message, clear it out. Basically, it resets the message back to the beginning and it waits for another trigger. Uh, the interrupt or IR pin would be if the logic signal triggered this pin, it would pause the message or interrupt the message. And then once the logic signal goes back to normal or goes from high to low or low to high, depending on how you set it, the message would begin or the whole message play sequence would begin right where it left off. So think of it as a pause button. The other one is we have input and outputs. These are not audio. These are logic input triggers and logic output triggers. So we are just going to add two input logic triggers and we're not going to use any of the logic outputs uh, that's another training video for doing logic outputs for advanced stuff we hit ok you can see here's our message player it's got a single output we will wire that 
to one of my outputs on my IDA8 and you can see we got pins 1 and 2 that's our two logic inputs that we defined when we created a button what are we going to trigger this message with a message has to be triggered somehow it could be triggered through virtual logic or logic controls which means is I can have a third party button or on my screen I can have a button that I click and it will play the message or trigger the event I could have contact closures on the out on the outside of the IDA8 box that are the inputs and each IDA8C and IDA8S unit has nine logic or control inputs on the stereo of the box so we could trigger a message that way by contact closure or opening on the exterior of the box say from a time clock fire alarm security system maybe a panic button uh, what have you now, another way to trigger a message is via a scheduled event and that's basically a logic event that is a timed event and that's another training video as well so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna set up a virtual logic here so we can manually trigger this I go to my logic tree and expand that out and if we go down here we see logic control and we will grab a single channel logic control and if I double click on this you can see a logic control is just a manual on or off button that I can trigger in the software or as we can see right here I can right click and set this up for third party control as well or external control through the logic inputs also so we will wire this into our logic one there we go and the other thing I want to show you is how do we set up a message player to trigger from an external contact closure on the back of the unit well we do that right here it's called evacuation input we expand this out and it says nine channel and we bring that in and there's our nine channels of logic triggers from the evacuation input these are your nine exterior contact closures or logic inputs on the back of the unit the IDH have nine inputs and nine logic outputs or control out so this is how you access those alright we've installed all this so now there's a couple of things we still need to do one is we need to actually set up the message player so we double click the message player to bring up the pop-up window one is the events this is the actual message play event that gets triggered from these logics there's nothing in here as you can see right now because we just added it so let's click add and now here's a name and we can give this a name so let's just say message play it could be no smoking message loading zone only message promotional message whatever you want this is the name of the message or the event that you would want to put in there we could give it a priority 1 to 99 1 being the highest priority and this is where we actually link this event to a message audio file so once we do this we just click on add and it's gonna click number one and then it's gonna say the file that we want to add and as you can see right here we can get these are right in the machine all we have to do is click on machine and here's all the message audio files that we put in the machine I will click on the let's click on the shuffling and we hit OK. How many times when we get a trigger will this play? I'll say twice. And the idle is how many seconds between the repeat times it actually pauses before it does the next repeat. So once all that's in there, we could say OK or just close this out. One note, I can add as many audio files as I want to this message player. Uh, we could say I'm sexy. We could say play that. How many times? Space between them. That way one trigger could actually play multiple message audio files one right after the other and if we left it like this the minute we hit that trigger we triggered a message to play it would play the I'm shuffling twice one second in between then it would play the I'm sexy audio file once and then that would be the end of the message play let's go ahead and remove the second one and there it is it's ready to go now we are not done yet we have this other tab called trigger the trigger is okay which of the two logic inputs is going to trigger this message and how do they operate so here we got channel one and we can see over here channel one is to our virtual logic we will say whenever that logic is triggered I want to play the event we call message play now we said to play three times or two times with one second in between I could say I want you to play forever and ever and ever until there's a stop event or something tells it to stop but I'm not going to do that I'm just going to say play it once and then the, the one time means that event is going to play the repeat twice times and then I could check the link but we could see here it is ready to go everything's all set up 
It's already set up in my shuffling, so we're good to go there. All right, the trigger, I could say trigger number two to play the same one. I could set this up differently if we just wanted to um, say the number of times we wanted to play or the interrupt, enable, or disable. We could set all that up for the forever times, but we're just going to let this go, uh, say, twice for that. And the link, there it is. It's the same one ready to go. All right. So if everything is set, all we have to do is compile. Everything's good there. And we will store. Yes, we will turn on audio. Yes, we want to go online. All right. So let's open up the output so we can see it. You should be able to hear it in the background as well. I will open up my logic control. And hopefully this should trigger our message. Every day I'm shuffling in. Every day I'm shuffling in. And it played it twice, and it stopped. The thing is, when you have a logic and it's set up for a control like this, it will stay on, and then it has to have something else to turn it off. Now, when we push this, the message should play twice. We'll see it here, and you should hear it in the background. Every day I'm shuffling in. Every day I'm shuffling in. There it is. I could turn this logic off, turn it back on. Every day I'm shuffling in. Every and I could stop it in the middle of it if I, if I turn the logic off because it's set up for control. Now, one thing about the logic, especially the uh, virtual logic controls, as you notice when I turn it on, it stays on. It does not turn off. So you would have to have a third-party control that would actually turn this logic control off if indeed you were using that for that purposes or else you couldn't be able to trigger it again from that logic control. So just be aware of that. That is a real quick tutorial on how to manage your audio files. Get them in the resource folder on your PC first, which is within a T-Studio. And to show you where that is, by the way, if you go to your computer, you go to your root drive, program files, 86, and you'll see your T's folder. All your T-Studio Terra Manager softwares as you install them get loaded into this folder. And then you find that your T-Studio 3.1 is what I'm working on. And then here is your resource folder right here. And these are all the tabs that you saw in the software. And if I went to WAVE, there's all my WAVE files right there just to let you know where they are. So once they're copied into there, formatted right, the key is go to your machine file system. And like we talked about earlier, make sure you add the folders to the machine. Once, you do, once they're up here, you know they're in the machine and ready to be linked to various events. I hope that helps you out and look for more videos in the near future. And thank you again. If you have any more questions, please visit our website at www.penton-usa.com. Thank you very much and have a terrific day.